Peveril Castle, also known as Castleton Castle or Peak Castle, is a ruined 11th century castle in the Peak District overlooking the village of Castleton. It was the main settlement of William Peveril, known as the Honour of Peveril, the feudal baron, and was founded sometime between the Norman Conquest of 1066 and its first recorded mention in the Doomsday Survey of 1086 by Peveril, who had lands in Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire as a tenant-in-chief of the king. The exact year he found the castle is uncertain, although it must have been started by 1086, as it's recorded in the Doomsday Book as one of 48 castles mentioned in the survey and the only one in Derbyshire. The castle was recorded at standing at Peak Eases, which has been translated as both Peak's Tail and Peak's Arse, which the cavern in Castleton is now named. Although the earliest Norman castles are usually built in timber, Peveril Castle seems to have been designed from the outset to be built in stone. William Peveril relied on continued royal favour to maintain his power. In 1100, the new king, Henry I, granted William his demesne in the peak. Thus the peak became an independent lordship under William Peveril's control and the castle became an important centre of the area, allowing the collection of taxes. Castleton benefited from the castle's new status as the lordship's economic heart. William Peveril died in 1114 and was succeeded by his son, William Peveril the Younger. In the civil war known as the Anarchy between King Stephen and the Empress Matilda, Peveril backed the losing side and his fortunes suffered after his capture at the Battle of Lincoln in 1141. In 1153, Peveril was suspected of attempting to poison Ranulf de Gurn on the 4th Earl of Chester. In 1153, the future king, Henry II, accused Peveril of plundering and treachery and threatened to confiscate his estates and hand them over to the Earl of Chester. Two years later, Henry, now king, followed through his threat. The Earl of Chester was dead by this time, and the king kept the property for himself. Once under royal control, Peveril became the administrative centre of the forest of High Peak. William Peveril the Younger died in 1155, and as his only male heir had predeceased him, the family's claim on the confiscated estates was taken up by the husband of William's daughter, Margaret Peveril. Margaret had married Robert de Ferrers, 2nd Earl of Derby. King Henry II visited Peveril Castle three times during his reign. The first visit in 1157, he hosted King Malcolm IV of Scotland, who paid homage to Henry after ceding Cumberland and Westmoreland to the English king. Henry II visited again in 1158 and 1164 when a group of barons led by Henry's sons, Henry the Young King, Geoffrey Duke of Brittany and Prince Richard, later Richard of Lionheart, took part in a revolt of 1173 to 1174 against the King's rule. The King spent £116 on building work at Peveril and Bolsover Castles in Derbyshire. The garrison was also increased. Previously, Peveril was guarded by two watchmen and a porter. This was expanded to a force led by 20 knights, shared with Bolsover and Nottingham castles. Henry II died in 1189 and was succeeded by his son, Richard of Lionheart. Soon after his coronation, Richard granted the lordship of the peak, including the castle, to his brother, John. While Richard was on crusade, John rebelled, and on his return, Richard confiscated the lordship. John became king in 1199 after Richard's death. William de Ferris, 4th Earl of Derby, maintained the claim of the Earls of Derby to the Peveril Estates. He paid King John 2,000 marks for the Lordship of the Peak, but the Crown retained possession of Peveril and Bolsover castles. John finally gave Ferris these estates in 1216 to secure his support in the face of countrywide rebellion. However, the Castellan, Brian de Lille, refused to hand them over. Although de Lille and Ferris were both King John supporters, the King gave Ferris permission to use force to retake the castles. The situation was still chaotic when Henry III became king after his father's death in 1216. Although Bolsover fell to Ferrer's forces in 1217 after a siege, there is no indication that Peveril was assaulted, and it's likely that Brian de Lille negotiated his surrender. Ferrer's only had possession of a lordship until King Henry III came of age when the time came he was reluctant to hand over the property, and after an initial deadlock the, town, the crown took control in 1223. The rest of the 13th century was relatively peaceful and records show that Peveril Castle was maintained by the Crown. In 1331, Edward III gave a lordship to his wife, Philippa of Hainaut. It was given to John de Warren, 7th Earl of Surrey in 1345. After his return to the Crown, the estate was given to John of Gaunt, Edward III's third surviving son, partially in exchange for the earldom of Richmond. 
John of Gaunt's John of Gaunt's ownership marked the start of Peveril Castle's decline. He was the richest nobleman in England and held several castles. As such, Peveril Castle was relatively unimportant, and he decided not to maintain it. And in 1374, gave orders to strip the lead from the buildings for reuse at Pontefract. He was inherited by his son. Henry Bolingbroke, later King Henry IV, and remained under royal control administered by the Duchy of Lancaster. During the 15th century, Peveril became less important as administrative functions were moved elsewhere. The castle, however, hosted local courts until 1600. A survey in 1609 found that Peveril was very ruinous and served for no use. At some point in the post-medieval period, the keep's facing stone was removed from three sides. The steep slope prevented the removal of the stone from the fourth side. At one point, the castle was used to house animals. Now, with the advent of railways in the 19th century, the area has become a tourist attraction. The Duchy of Lancaster undertook maintenance in the 19th century to ensure the castle's condition did not deteriorate further, mostly by clearing rubble and adding mortar. Sir Walter Scott's 1823 novel, Peveril of the Peak, set in the mid-17th century, describes as castle ruins. In 1932, the Duchy gave custody of the castle to the Office of Works, which is now the English heritage, and they maintain the, the castle, and you can go and English heritage, you can enter it and uh, you know, have a good look around. If you live in the village, you get it for free. So that's the history of the castle. Um, really interesting, uh, quite uh, key in uh, the early days of the Norman Conquest. Uh, get a hand over several times as people bickered and fought. But anyway, well worth a visit. I recommend taking a day out and a trip to visit it.